Well, for more on Bank of America, we want to turn to an investor who owns 500,000 shares of the company. Bill Fitzpatrick is an equity analyst at Optique Capital Management. He's joining us from our Chicago bureau. Bill, glad to have you with us. Before these numbers broke, you and I spoke, and you said the credit losses really weren't going to scare you off. And I don't know if you just heard our reporter there, Ellen Breitman, talking about Bank of America setting aside in loss reserves $4.7 billion just in case there's more losses. That is to say, they anticipate them. What do you make of that move? Uh, yes, hi, good morning. Uh, that was not a surprise. And I think the, the good thing about Bank of America from a credit loss perspective is most of this is still tied to residential real estate and credit cards. And the credit cards in particular, you can track pretty closely. It's a, if you use the unemployment rate, that's usually a pretty good barometer. So when you dig into the numbers, what you're going to want to see is if there's a spillover into other asset classes. But for the most part, this is a consumer franchise, and I think they've got a pretty good idea of what the ultimate losses are going to be. So uh, I'd, I'd be surprised if there's any, anything out there that's uh, any different from what we would expect uh, outside of how, uh, residential real estate. So uh, I think they have the capital cushion to stomach additional losses there. What do you think about market share as far as gaining deposit money? I mean, what do you want to see from the company? That was actually very encouraging in the first quarter. So it's very ironic that you see a flight to quality to Bank of America, uh, but the truth is they now have a presence in every major metropolitan area. They're in a great position to scoop up market share from some of the struggling competitors, particularly some of the smaller regional and community banks. So I'd like to see that uh, deposits growth increased in the second quarter. It was 6% in the first quarter. Uh, that's a high number to go after, but anything positive there would be very encouraging. As an investor, as we said, you have 500,000 shares there at Optique. How do you see the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch combination? Obviously, it's causing a lot of fireworks in D.C., but from where you sit as a stock owner, what do you think? Well, just look at the last two quarters here. You know, the retail banking market is very, very challenged right now. And you've got a great capital markets division at Merrill Lynch, which has helped offset those losses. And that's why they're profitable here in the second quarter. They would not be outside of uh, the Merrill Lynch revenue. So ultimately, the earnings power of this company is probably close to maybe $2 a share. Uh, and Merrill Lynch is a big part of that. So sure, the fireworks from uh, Washington, D.C. Are, are entertaining. Uh, but at the end of the day, this acquisition is going to work out. The question is, do they have the capital to stomach the losses in between. And I, think, I don't think you can underestimate the magnitude of, of raising that $30 billion post-stress test. Uh, this company is in, in pretty good shape. So you're happy that Bank of America has Merrill Lynch. Are you happy with the leadership at Bank of America? I mean, should Ken Lewis stay on this year? Should he step down after that? What's your opinion? Yeah, you know, you've got to digest everything that happened between Lewis and Paulson, you know, to determine if he's still the right guy. You know, my thought on that is uh, I don't think he's going to be a long-term chief executive. I think he's probably in transition now, uh, maybe another year or two at the, at the very most. But the company was built on acquisitions, which is what really where his forte was. And going forward, you know, the story's more going to be about integration and, and execution. So uh, I suspect he'll transition out of the job uh, over the next 12 to 18 months or so. Bill, we have about 30 seconds left. How important is it for you that the company gets the TARP money back to the government? Uh, well, we'd like to see that only because if you look at their competitors out there, uh, they're going to be at a disadvantage to the J.P. Morgans and the Goldmans who have done that. Uh, but the truth is there's still a lot of uncertainty out there. Uh, I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon. Uh, it's a lot of money out there. Uh, I think you're going to look at that's probably a 2010 event for Bank of America. But as long as there's some insight that, that perhaps is going to happen, uh, whether it's now or you know, six or 12 months from now, I, I think we would view that very encouraging. It just has to be a game plan in place to, to exit the TARP. Bill, thanks very much for your time. Bill Fitzpatrick, Optique Capital Management.